polishing the ports on my dive case. Getting ready for a dive today with my family. My brother-in-law Phil is in town and my dad is going to join us. He did a little scuba in college, but he's never gone free diving, so I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> so in Seabeck, Washington, the visibility was fantastic today. Uh, we were able to see a lot of cool stuff and you know for a first dive for my dad I'm really excited that we went out and the conditions were so good you know my, my first dives out here were nowhere near this nice and the water was nowhere near this warm you hear that home that is a plain fin midshipman it's a funky looking fish but they uh, make this mating call about this time of year when you get a group of them, they're so loud you can hear them from the shore. Now this guy, you can see that he's injured just on the upper left side of his head. Probably an eagle. Um, tried to grab him and missed, would be my guess. The eagles love to feed on these guys. It's kind of their favorite food before the first salmon run. They usually live at 400 feet deep, but they come up every year to mate in the intertidal zone. They can actually breathe air. Now here we're actually uh, collecting some of them. Not the most delicious fish in the world, but uh, edible. Now check out the underside. See those iridescent pearls? He actually lights up at 400 feet to mimic predators and such. Now this is a lion's mane jellyfish. They actually grow to be the largest jellyfish in the world. And this was the first time I'd ever seen one. But they're supposed to be pretty common from here to Alaska. This is my dad's first duck dive. How are those suits doing? I feel really good. This feels really warm. Yeah, I'm more than warm. <laughs> I mean, it's not uncomfortable, but it's it's ridiculous being in this water. And yeah, it's like a bathtub. I, I, what? It's like a bathtub. Yeah, I mean, I can't feel water except to my ankles. Yeah. Everything else is neutralized. Look at that shot of your hands and your face. Oh, my hands, uh, my hands feel like it should, it's a little colder than bath water. Oh, I can barely feel it. But it's definitely not tap water. Yeah. Look at that. This is a sailboat that sunk on January 4th, I believe. I was out here one day diving and it was floating. Someone had abandoned it on the water, moored out from the shore. And then two days later, I dove again, and it was underwater. So it's been here about five months, something like that. As of the time I'm recording this, they actually have come and retrieved the boat. It's no longer in the water. But it was fun to dive on it one last time. And snagged this little crab out of it. Sadly, crab season hasn't opened yet, so all the crab that we caught, we did let go. Uh, it's just fun to catch them. You can see I'm wearing my Vihana suit. It's three and a half mil open cell suit. Um, it is not very warm. So by this time in the, the dive, I was starting to get a little bit chilled, but nowhere near as much as Phil. He, he's wearing a three mil uh, Hawaii wetsuit and he was about ready to come up. I, I think after this trip, he's convinced to get a five mil. But my dad, he's wearing my seven mil and uh, we just did not have enough weights for him. He you know, struggled with buoyancy, so I need to get more weights on his belt and uh, we'll get out again. But with some of the clips that I snagged, I didn't have a real plan, just getting them for fun. So here is a, uh, a short montage of the clips that I got today.
Today we're at Lake Crescent. We're gonna find a spot to get in the water and check it out. This seems like the spot. Just loaded down to the beach. Gonna get in the suit and uh, pop in. I'm stoked for the, uh, the viz in here is really sweet. So mess around these branches. See what I can see. Just saw some fish jumping out there. Um, so hopefully it's rad. This will be Phil's last dive in Washington before headed back home to Hawaii. And again, this isn't a specific gig or anything like that. This is just a dive for fun. Uh, my brother-in-law's in town and we wanted to get one more in before he has to take off. So. I'm not going to show a lot of the footage that I got yet on my, my big camera because I do think I'm going to use it for a, a spec project uh, here soon. So, you know, I'll post that on Instagram. I might, maybe I'll put it in a, a vlog in the future, but um, for now, here's just some GoPro footage. So, you know, in the future, I can look back to this dive fondly. I can see maybe some ways that I've improved in my diving and my technique and just kind of relive the memory just enjoy it if you are a wetsuit expert you may have noticed that this suit says Mako this is my Mako suit it's 7 mil open cell I've really enjoyed this suit it might have been a little bit overkill for this water though we're headed into the summer and this water, uh, it would be cold without a suit, but with the seven mil suit, <laughs> I was on the border of overheating by the end of the dive. So at one point, Phil had this great idea. He found this spot he wanted to take photos uh, and he asked me to take my fins off so he can get some photos of me down below. Um, the one problem with taking your fins off mid dive is they are a pain to get back on. Here I just set up the camera. Uh, I was trying to film myself doing a dive, but the camera rotated and caught some other fish going by and stuff like that. I had actually never swam with freshwater fish before. You know, I've caught a lot of trout on a pole, but this got me excited for the idea of spear fishing trout. Definitely want to try that in the future. Now, this is one of those things, when you're diving, you want to be fairly aerodynamic or hydrodynamic. When you're carrying a big camera, it makes it difficult. So one way that I try to do that is by not looking where I'm going too much. I'm going straight down. I want to keep my head forward instead of actually craning back and looking at the bottom. Um, it just helps me move a little faster, move a little bit easier. The downside of not watching where you're going, well, you might be able to guess what the downside is. I'm no pro diver and I've only had this big housing for a matter of months. Uh, so 
take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. You know, if you're someone who is very used to this and, and you have some tips or advice, you see what I'm doing is a little bit uh, funky. Please don't just judge me silently. Let me know what you're thinking. I would love to get any tips that you have. This is, you know, I'm just learning. And every time I get out in the water, every time I, I hit that record button, it's practice and I'm trying to get better. So please do let me know if you have any tips for me. Phil was getting a bit cold and we had been in there a long time so we decided to get out of the water and uh, but before we went home we stopped by uh, Crescent Beach walked around checked out the tide pools it's a beautiful view out there really want to come back and dive the kelp forest that's out off the the point there from there uh, we made our way home and we had a lot of gear to clean I'm so wet, but I'm not even close. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you're having a great day. And hopefully I'll uh, see you around.